שני אחים נשאו עם שתי אחיוס. One of the brothers dies. It's poshut, right? It's achos ishto. Va'akach meis ishto. Then subsequently, the brother, the surviving brother's wife dies. Achos ishto lachem meis is permitted. Except here is a problem because when the brother died, it was eishasach. So the eishasach never fell to yibum, right? Two brothers married to two sisters. Ruvain is married to Rochel. Ruvain dies. When Ruvain dies, Leah is still alive, married to Shimon. So it's achos ish. It's eish. No, it's permitted, but this Achos Isha, but at the time of the Misa, of Ruvain, she was Eishas Ach, which never became Moka Mitzvah. Right? She never became Moka Mitzvah because she was Achos Ishto at the time. Now, Achos Ishto goes off. But factually, but since at the time of Misa she was classified as Eishas Ach, Shlobah Moka Mitzvah, that stays on. That doesn't rule. Of course, it's only Bishas Nefila, only then is, is, she, is her reclassification. The classification is only at time of death. A time of death, what's a classification? So even though subsequently she becomes now longer Achosishto, it's gone. She's not reinstated to the original. That's what the mission says. We'll see. Shelsheni harezu asur olav olamis. Why? Since she was also at that time, even though now Achosishto is no longer a problem, it's gone. So it's pshito. Because before we had a case with two brothers and a third, there were three brothers. Before we had a case like this, yeah, you you had two brothers. The, the case before we had three brothers. Two brothers married to a sister, one brother married to a third party. Here, now brother A dies, is married to the sister, so the the, the Yavama could fall to the brother who's married to, to the Nochris. So Yibum could be taking place. And there we say regarding the surviving brother who was married to Achos Ishto, what do we say? Daloch is since she's also Bishas Nefilo. Even though his wife dies later, he can't do Yibum. So we, he's the only brother. Is there even a consideration? We never even got started. There, at least she was called the Yavama. Here she's not even called the Yavama. Nothing. So what does the Mishnah have to tell me this? And this is a previous Mishnah. Right? That's tomorrow's question. Howard, you had a question? Okay. Look, Samar says, Tana Hotona Beresha. Yeah, the Tana factually stated the second mission of first. Oh, yeah, what, so why does the. Vahai Chazuletero, and he held the first case, which should be Mutter. Why? Because even though it's Nesra, Lo Shoachas, but since she's called the Yavama, so if the Isra Chazi should go up, may she be married. Then afterwards he changes his position. He changes his position. And after you realize, no, it's also. Why? Because it doesn't make a difference even though Chazil Yibum, right? But since for him it's Nesro Shoachas, it's gone forever. But so since it's a greater Chidush, so he states that first. So, so why state the second one? Once the Mishnah was stated, the Mishnah stays in place. You understand? The re reason why the really he held the first case should be Mutter. And originally, this was the mission that was stated. Because originally, she's called the Yavoma. Here, there's a Dovah Pasha. But then afterwards, he says, no, even that's awesome. Because Nesra Lo Shachas. So, so take this mission out. Once a mission is already put in place, Lo Zazam Yom Koma. A Mishnah came in, Zad Lo Zazam Koma, came in, why? I want that everything was committed to memory. So if once you pull out one of the things, I'll, I'll give you an example. I say, Misha You know, I, I have in mind, Committed to memory, maybe uh, 60 names. Let's say one person dies, one more person recovers, and I don't have to say that name. I have to make an effort because it's a red, uh, because it does, it, it's, it's a flow. Right? I have to stop and right away until I get back. Right? It's the same thing. So I want everything was committed to memory. So therefore, the Mishnah, even though it's not a Chidush, but once it's Nishnis, Lozazim Koma. That's the principle. Yeah. That's Torah Shabbat Peh. If you take a look in the Rambam, in the uh, Hagdoma, Yad Chazoka, he writes, Yuda, this is important for you to know, because you, you, you speak of it, that he says the most classical Hebrew is Rabbi Yudan Nossi's Hebrew. The Mishnah is the most classical Hebrew. And not only, w but what was the genius of Rabbi Yudan Nossi, his capability? He wrote it in a way that the phraseology 
lends itself to memory. You know, certain, like there's certain expressions, it's easy to remember. It's like, it's like a concept, it, but it's, it's like one expression, right? So he wrote the mission in a way where you have like concepts in a certain phraseology that one flows into the other. That's, that's the Rambam writes. And you write, take a look in Hagdoma in Yad Chazoka. That was the, the Koach Rebbe Yudah and Nossi. And it was, oh, there was only one Rebbe Yudah and So therefore, if, if it, so it's not only remembering the mission, it's not only because you pull this out, everything flows. It's a flow. Right, exactly. Now you understand what Rebbe Yudah and is called Rebbeinu HaKadosh. There's a Moshe Rabbeinu and Rabbeinu HaKadosh. Because Moshe Rabbeinu was the Nossi in Torah, and he was the one who preserved the Torah, Rebbe Yudah and Torah Abona, Bo Leo, okay. Bo Leo, Chai Bo Leo, Mishum Eishasach, Mishum Achos Yisha. Diver Rebbe Yossi, hear this story. Hear this, she's an Achos Yisha, she's Achos Yisha, she's two. Eishasach Shlomo, Mok, is Achos Yisha. Unrelated to Yibu. A person's, a, 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 a man, a brother, no, he's alive, he divorced his wife. Two brothers, one's married to a sister of his wife, then he divorces her. Now he goes, when his wife's still alive, and he has relations with her. How many Yisurim was he over? One or two? Right? So Rabbi Yossi says, He's chayov mishum eshesach or mishum achos isha. She is eshesach. Eshesach shlomo ka mitzvah. No yibum. Even if he died, if the, if the children is eshesach, always eshesach. Always. Right? So, he's, so how many chatos does he have to bring? He has to bring two chatos. Good. Rabbi Shimon omei nechayv mishum isha eshesach belevod. Yeah, only one. So we're going to see in a moment. Because even if you hold, ain't is a right? The Morris say, that's the machlok. Is a ain't is a If she's already forbidden now, a new isa comes about, is the second isa prohibition chal? Right? That's the question. Now, let's say he first marries, he fir, he, 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 let's say he, um, he marries a woman, his brother marries a woman, let's say he marries a woman yeah. first. And then afterwards, so, and his, his wife had a sister. Okay. She so she's already okay. Achos Ishto. So Eishas Ach can't be Chal. Right? Wait, wait, wait. What happens like this? Let's say the brother marries a woman. He's not married. He's a single guy. <coughs> it's Eishas Ach. Now, subsequently, he marries the sister. In <coughs> Eishas is what makes it? Achos Isha. Achos Isha is not Chal. <coughs> Well, just give me a glass of water. Yes. Uh, how it is. <coughs> okay. <coughs> so Rav Shimon Omei and Chayav Le Mishum Eishasach Bilavod. So what's the case? The Gemara doesn't explain. The case is that the brother married the, the woman before he married the sister. So what came, what came first? Came first. So Gemara says, "I've got Tanya Rav Shimon Omei and Chayav Le Mishum Eishasach Bilavod." So how do you work it out? Look, Asher. Right, look, Asher, Kan she nosa chai v'akach nosa mes. The Kan she nosa mes v'akach nosa chai. It depends what, what the order of the marriage was. Okay? Thank you. So, Mer says like this. So, we're saying like this. Reb Shimon holds, Eni shechal liser. And it depends who married who first. Right? Reb Shimon hechod nosa mes. Vachach nosen chai, right? Where first the brother married the, the, his wife, and then he married the sister. So we said there, Rav Shimonolz, it's only Eishasach, right? There's only Eishasach there, right? Kevin, the Achosi Yisha lo chayil tisiabi yibumik. From a phenomenal question, what's the reason why he can't do yibum? Because there's an iser Achosi Yisha, but if you hold it, it's chal liser. So when the brother dies, what is she? She's an Eishasach. Let him marry her. Let him do yibum. Never chal. Tomorrow says stuff a poshut. Omer Avash Yisra Chosisha mitl toli v'koy. Why was Isha, why was Achosisha not chal? Because there's an Isra there. But if you tell me she's an Isha's Ach Moka Mitzvah, so there's nothing preventing the Achosisha from coming about. Exactly, it's mitl v'toli. There's something blocking it. But the moment you give the opening, right? Ipoke is Isha's Ach or Isra Chosisha v'chayil. Of a portrait. Yes, yes. You following, yes. Howard? Yes. Hilkoch, Lopaka. So if that's the case, the Torah says, uh, it, 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 no, it never goes away. Right. It's always, Be, 
No, because it has no value. The whole purpose is to do yibum, to perform the mitzvah since the moment you pull it out, the other thing comes. You can't perform yibum anyway. So therefore, the Eishet Sach stays in place. Okay? Very logical. Rabbi Yossi says, what? Yichai for two, right? So Rabbi Yossi, Yisachal Yisr. Rabbi Yossi, Yisachal Yisr, because he says, Chayv Shtayim. I bought Tanya over Avero Sheesh for Shtay Misos. Need him Chamura. Wait, that's the Tanakh. No, 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 no. Not Kim Lim Jav. Person does two, is Chayv, Skilo is Chayv Chenek. The Sanhedrin puts him to death with Chenek, with, with Skilo. What? You can't kill a person twice. It's not he loses it. So it's not you lose the blood. You know. No, you can't. You don't implement the lesser. You implement the more serious. It's not skilo. Rabbi Yossi Omer, Nidun beziko rishono. Habolov. Hear this? Let's say he first committed adultery. Adultery is chenek. Then he was violated Shabbos. With skilo. The, no, because chenek, his, his cate- cate- category is chenek, skill is not chal. He came first. Zika Risha, whatever he violated first, that's what comes first. What is the case? Betanya Ketzat, what, what, no, because it doesn't, it doesn't really make sense. It has nothing to do with Yisachal Lisser. Because the fact is, if he first committed adultery, then he violates Shabbos. What does one thing have to do with another? So we're t- speaking within the context of Yisachal Lisser. Here? It can't be the case I said. Can't be. You got it? Because that has nothing to do with Yisachal Lisser. Person has a dual, a dual liability, so of course you give him the more se- severe. What's the case? Nidum Zikri Shona. What is the case? Haboa Olov Olov Chamoso. Venasis Eishesach Eishesish. Nidum the Chamoso. Now Eishesish is what? Is Chenek. Chamoso, his mother in law is Srefa. Let's say he marries his wife, his wife's a widow. His, wife's, his, his mother in law is a widow or a divorcee. So when he married his wife, what is the relationship between his mother-in-law and himself, Chamoso? Subsequently, she gets married. So now she's Eishas Ish, and she's a married woman now. Now he commits adultery with his mother-in-law. Do we give Shreifa or do we give Chenek? Then you give Shreifa. Why? Because since she was Chamoso before Eishas Ish, therefore Eishas Ish can't be Chal, because Eishas Ish is Chenek. From beside, Eni is Chal Lisser. Right? So, Nidim Chamoso. What about Eishes Ish? Benase Chamoso. Let's say when he married his wife, she, he had a father in law. Right? He had a father in law. And then after, so she was in Eishes before she became Chamoso. Nidim Eishes Ish. So then she gets Chenek. She even though Sreifa is more Chamor, right? She gets Chenek. She doesn't get Sreifa. Uh, here we just finished saying we're talking about what? Rabbi Yossi says, Chaliser. Yichayim Shtayim. But here we see clearly, Rabbi Yossi says, Nidim Bechamura. Need the zika rishon, zika rishon. No, the first, the first categ- categorization. So here we say Eishes Ish. She doesn't give chamoso, but if you hold Yisrael Yisr, so when he commits adultery, she's still chamoso. So she gets reifa, right? Omer Avavo, Mod Reb Yosef Bishad Mosif. We hear Mosif, meaning like this: when we speak about Eishes Eishes Ach, let's say we spoke about a case. She's Achos Ishto, she's Achos, he was married to a woman, and then afterwards, his, bro, and his wife has a sister. His wife has a sister. And now his brother marries the sister. So the, the sister in law is Achos Ishto and Eshes and Eishis Ochiv. He has relations with his sister in law. He's alive. He, he died. He died. He died. So what, what is he in violation of? His brother d- divorced her. He's a violation of Achus Isha and Isha Sach. That, that's what Rabbi Yossi says. So you see, you see he holds Isha Lisser. We're speaking about there are other brothers. Besides the brother married to the sister, there are other brothers. So just as, so normally what do we say? Hey, why is, what's the concept? What is the rationale of any Isha Lisser? Since she's already forbidden, the second Isha has no value. Right? But what about if there are other brothers? Wait, listen. No, we're not talking within context of Yibum. No Yibu. So that she assumes the classical Eshitzach for the other brothers. This woman was single. So when, the, when Shimon marries the woman, there's Levi Yehuda that. So now she's categorized as Eshitzach has value for the other brothers. Once I put the label Eshitzach for the others, it affects him too. If it's only the two of them, 
She's already Asura because Achus Ishta. What's the point of adding? She's already Asura. He married Rachel first. Now his brother Shimon marries Leah. It's just the two of them. It's Achus Ishta. What, what value does Eishes have? Nothing. But let's say there are other brothers. So when Shimon marries that woman, now the Issa Eishes has relevance to them because there's no permission of Achus Ishta to them. So once Eishes comes upon them, it comes upon all their brothers. So this, this it applies to all of them. So that's the case that Rabbi Yossi said is halacha of Yechayim Shtayim. But if it's just the two of them, then there'll be one. So, and so the example that he says, Zika Rishonos, it's the equivalent of only two of them. Right? It's Bola Chamoso. The only thing is, yeah, 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 yeah. The only problem is, I mean, you know what the problem is? It says, it says, Bola Chamoso, Nesab, she became an Eishis Ish, she's Chayav for Chamoso. Right? That, that's what we started. No. But if she got married after, she's, and she's an Eishis Ish to others. No. She's an Eishis to the rest of the world. So let it be Eishis Ish to him. You got the question. No, it doesn't make a difference. If you can go with, with constant of Mosif, once you Mosif Eishis Ish, is she Eishis for the rest of the world? So then, then there's Eishis Ish. She has to be, based on the Mosif, we say Rabbi Yossi agrees, so she should be Chayv Shnayim. So Rabbi Yossi can't be speaking of Zika Rishon in that case. It's because she was first in the Ish, then she became Chamoso. So, so that's easy. That's a good one. No, that's, that's Enis Chaliser. Then it's Enis Chaliser. But Rabbi Yossi says both sides. Right? So the Gemara is going to ask the question in a minute. It's a stira. We're saying that Rabbi Yossi holds Is Chaliser when it's Mosif. So if that's the case, Rabbi Yossi says Zika Rishon, it depends which happened first. Chamoso Ish Ish. But if you tell me it's a Mosif, even if H, even even if Hamos comes first, but it doesn't make a difference. You know why it doesn't make a difference? Because Hamos is more Chomor. You got it. Hamos is more Chomor. Oh, he's no, no. One case he's not going to get the more No, 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 no. No, 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 no. If he marries Hamosa first. Wait, wait, wait. Now she becomes an Eishis Ish. No, it's both. But she'll still get Hamosa. Hamosa is more Chomer. But let's see, it's the other way. Let's the other way. First, she's an Eishis Ish. Then she becomes Hamosa. Right? So he gets Chenek. So it's good. It's good. It's good. It's good. The other one's not relevant because Hamosa is more Chomer. And the other way around, she will get Eishis Ish. Right? 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 Exactly. 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 Samar says, Omer Rebbe Modu Rebbe Yossi, B'yisem Mosef. Samar says, Peinach, Hechod Denosachai, V'akach Nosem Mes. Right? He, Nosachai, V'akach Nosem Mes. He first married a woman. Then the brother who died married his wife's sister. So when he married his wife's sister, what's, Migu di Tosef Yisrael Gabi Yachim, I Tosef Yisrael Gabi Didei. Right? She became an Eishisach to the other brothers, so Eishazach comes to him too also, correct? That's Chayv Shtayim, so if he, he, he does not Bishog, he has to bring two Chatos. Let's say first his brother married the woman, the, 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 the woman that subsequently he marries the sister of his brother's wife. So what, what preceded what? Eishazish preceded Achos Isha, correct? My Isha Mosev What's the Mosev Isha? There's no, no Isha Mosev over there. Right? If he first marries the woman and then his brother marries the sister, you have Isha Mosif. But if he first, his brother first marries the woman, he first marries his, he, his brother first marries the woman. So what comes first? Eishas Ish. Ach. And then he marries the sister. Achos Ish shouldn't take effect. Should not take effect. Right? When it's second. V'chi teimo migu ditosa v'kulo achvoso. He says, maybe you want to say, right? Let's say there, there are other sisters. Achvoto. Let's, let's say there are other sisters. So now, until he married, until he married the sister, right? This woman was also, this one woman is also achos enough to keep her off limits. But what about the other sisters? No. We need, we have, we, they become achos They're all Zachos Ishto. 
of, of the, the, second, the second brother who marries. No, 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 no. Again, Ruve marries Rachel. Okay? Let's say, Shimon marries Rachel. Shimon's the guy who eventually dies. He marries Rachel first. And now, Ruvain, Ru, wait, 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 Ruvain didn't marry anybody, he's a single guy. Ruvain, since Eshesach. Now, Ruvain has many brothers, doesn't make a difference. Eshesach, it's his wife's brother. Now he marries Leah. Now Ruvain marries Leah. So, Ahos Ishtar would say, you know something, it's not relevant. Because since, since, since Rochel already is off limits, Eshesach, what do you need? What about the, the Zilpen Bilo? Besides Rachel and Leah, the silver other sisters. So it comes out, when he marries Leah, Ruby marries Leah, Achos Ishtar comes into play. Right? Because he, how does he become forbidden to the sisters? The others, the Zilpah and Bilo. Right? Once Achos Ishtar Ish comes to play, all the sisters. No, all the sisters. Okay. So including the including, including Eishas Ach. But that's called Kolel. I'm Kolel. Right? See, before called Moshev, there it started there and he was brought in there. Here it's starting with him and she's being brought in. Right? So it's a kolem. Right? So the Mara says, Since he becomes forbidden, all the other sisters, Bill and Zilpo, it's a kolem. It's a kolem. And we don't see all holds it's a kolem. Elo Marova, Malani Olaf, Kilo, Asishtayim. That when Reb Yossi says oh, he's chayv shtayim, really doesn't mean he has to be two chatos. We categorize him as if, on a certain level, he violated both. Why? Veinu chayv elachas. He has to bring one korban. Ain't his chal leiser. Vechein wey mas orega. Vechein ki also rov and orav biyochan amalu of kiilu also beis. Veinu chayv elachas. So my nafkamina. What's the, what are you talking about? Theoretically, he violated two. What, what's the? It has to have some practical application. The cover of Bainat Rusham Gibmur in Yer. The question is, even though in terms of liability, he has no liability because it's Chal Yisr, but what about, you know, the Mishnah says in, in uh, Tzalachal Mishim Sinai that, you know, you're not permitted to bury a Russia next to a Tzadik. Halachal Mishim Sinai. What about, relatively speaking, between the two of them, he's good compared to the other guy because he's so much worse. Right? So they have different, they have different cemeteries. They have one cemetery for what? The Skolim and the Srofim. And they had a separate cemetery for uh, Nechnokim and, uh, and what's it called? It? And Herig. Two different cemeteries. Okay? Why? Because factually, as a classification of person, he's classified as a greater Russia. So that's a Shtaim. So the same thing here. Even though. No, we're talking Chayv Shtayim, no. Chayv Shtayim means Chatos. The more severe. Yeah, yeah. No. It's not immediately. No, no, no. No, no, it's Nichlo. It's Nichlo. It's Nichlo. It's Nichlo. Nichlo. But you see, over there, even after he's killed, no, but you see clear... Wait, wait, but you see, no, 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 but you see from the Mishnah, you see from the Mishnah in, in Sanhedrin, he's put to death, he did tshuva, but still you put him in the cemetery of Rosham Gemurim. But he already had kapora. The kapora doesn't happen immediately. After he, he decomposes, they, then they take him out. Then they can put him in another cemetery. But until the, so you see, the kapora is not yet fully there. It's not there yet. It's not there immediately. It's a process. Yeah, yeah. He's a double rush. No, he didn't die yet. He didn't die yet. He didn't die yet. He didn't die yet. Presently, when he says Chayv Shtaimi, we see him as a greater Russia. No, so let's say now he has a heart attack and he dies. Where do we bury him? You bury him with Shem Gibor. He's a worse Russia than the others. I Enis Chalis. Enis Chalis has to do with liability in terms of carbon uh, punishment in Bezdin, but classification of person. He's fast, he's, well, he's a greater Russia. He's, yeah, Malini or Kosov. You know, to tell of a story. There was this, um, you know, Bayonne, uh, Jersey City, Hoboken, in the 20s, in the teens. 
they had, that's where the Jewish mafia lived. Yeah. And all the Rabbonim in these cities were Lithuanian Rabbonim, Litvish Rabbonim. And all these, they spoke Yiddish. All these mafia people spoke sure. Yiddish. And they used to come. Rosh Hashanah Kippur, they would come. You know, they come, you know, and they supported the rabbis. They supported the shuls. So what happened? One of the mafia brothers dies. So they have a big funeral, you know, in the shul. In those days, they called the shul. There were no temples. It was a shul. So they pull up to the shul. You know, they have all their limousines outside and all their henchmen waiting there. And the shul is filled with people. The rabbi gets up and says, a hespit. In those days, a hespit, not a eulogy, a hespit. He says, and Yiddish, he says, he was a ganif. He was a rotseach. He used to drink himself into a stupor. He was a this and he was a that. So somebody says to the rabbi, Rabbi, not, not because they're going to kill him, they're going to shoot him <laughs> right on the spot. They say, Rabbi, there's a eulogy. You're supposed to speak about the praiseworthiness of the person. You're painting such a dark picture of the person. He had a brother who was worse than him. <laughs> Risham Giburim. You got it? That's what we're talking about over here. He's bad. He's yet worse. The Gemara, for explicit Gemara. Okay. But in this Chalisa, it doesn't make a difference. He's still a bad guy. Uplukter. This discussion over here is, is a machlokis. Do you see it as one? Or do we still see, even though there's no liability, you still see it in classification as the more severe? Dietmar. Zor Shishimish B'Shabbos. Now, a, a Kohen's permitted to fish in on Shabbos. Let's say a Yisrael goes... And does shechita on Shabbos? It's not poshet shechita. The shechita is kasher bezor. But let's see, he burns the korban on the mizbeach on Shabbos. It's chayv me. He violated Shabbos, right? Zor shishim shvayv. Reb Chiyom chayv shtayim. He has a double liability. He's a zor shishimish, and also he's he, uh, he's a non-kohen who fishit. He's, he's not qualified. And also Shabbos, he violated Shabbos. Chayv shtayim. Well, we'll see in a moment. Chayv shtayim doesn't mean. A Zor who does, does a vote of Rashi says is Chai Misa B'dei Shamayim. The only time you have to bring a Chatos is only for Koris, not for Misa B'dei Shamayim. So, via what does Chai B'shtayim mean? The Gemara is going to explain. Chai B'shtayim doesn't mean two Chatos. Doesn't mean two Chatos. Can't mean two Chatos. Because a non coin officiates, the liability is not Koris. So, even if he does it inadvertently, there's no liability of Chatos. So, what is Chai B'shtayim? The Gemara is going to show. Chai B'shtayim means classification. You see him as a worse person. Okay? We're going to see. What does it have to do with Yisachal Lisa? We'll see in a moment. You only see it as one. So Reb Chia hears this, and he, say, he swears, How could you, Reb Chia, say one? I heard from Rebbe, only, only I heard two. Wait. When, when Reb Chia says two, and he heard Kapara saying differently, he says, how could you say one? I heard from... So, Baba Kapara also was a Talmud Rebbe. Kovitz Kapar Kapara, Vinishba, Avoda, Kashmani, Rebbe Achas. Yeah, they have a disagreement. What did Rebbe actually say? One or two. Hizcha Reb Chia Lodun. So Reb Chia started to bring proof to his position that his position is a correct position. Yeah, he says, Shabo, Reb Chia Lodun. Shabbos is the Kol Nesro. Shabbos, you're not permitted. All Jews are not permitted to violate Shabbos. Correct? When the Torah says you're permitted to violate the Shabbos and the Mignosh, who did Torah permit it to? It's a Kohanim. Kohanim. Zorim. So if that's the case, how many liabilities are there? Yesh Khan Shtayim. Yesh Khan Mishum Zarus. Yesh Khan Mishum Shabbos. So therefore, there's a double liability, correct? Yishchub Bar Kapor Lodun. Shabbos Lakol Nesro. Shabbos is forbidden to everybody. Kishuhutra Bimigda. Kishu, it's him. Oh, good. Kishu hutra Hutra. It's permitted in the Migdosh. Yeah? Saying Kanelo Zarus. So therefore, Shabbos has no relevance to him. Therefore, a Zor who did the Avod in the Migdosh has no liability. Meaning, there's no, he doesn't bring a chat. He's saying he doesn't bring a chatos. Yeah? Because when the Torah was Matir, it was Matir Zaru, it was Matir Shabbos in the Migdosh. Wayne would say, but factually, he's not permitted to officiate. But he's saying, if officiates according to Bar Kapora, there's no liability of a chatos. 
Azor Shishimish, because in the Migdosh. No, 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 no. No, which means no. No, Rabbi Kabbalah says Achas Mishum Zarus, because Zarus is never permitted by 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 a non kohen. But in the Migdosh, Torah permits Shabbos. So therefore, it's only Achas. It's not Shtayim. Even though, even yeah, yeah, but he, well, that's what he wants to say. But 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 if we're comparing it, but if we're comparing it to our discussion here, but if we're comparing it to our discussion right now in terms of classification, it has no relevance to our whole discussion over here, right? Because Bakaris is one, it has nothing to do with his chalisut. It's the Torah says there's no permission. Does that mean what a, a, a kohen, a non kohen, is permitted to 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 do shchit in the migdash? It's all within the context of korban. If you want the kholin, the slaughter in the migdash. When we say Hutchub Migdash means a Korban Sutrub Migdash. Not the Moloch of, of Natils and Shama. Right? Tur doesn't say you could do Natils and Shama in the Migdash. Natils and Shama of a Korban you could do. So even though the Korban may not be a kosher Korban, right? right? But because he's a Zor. The Avoda, the Torah permits, that's Mutter. Of course it's Chal. The moral is a shvus b'migdosh, a shvus b'migdosh, right? But it's only what pertains to korbonos. It's hutchu b'migdosh, because we're talking about zor sheshimesh, a zor who officiated within the context of korb avoda. Okay. Listen to the story here. Bal mum sheshimesh betuma. No, interesting. A person's bal mum, a kohen. He's a kohen, but he's missing an eye. He's bal mum. Okay, eye patch. It's a question of chatzitza too. He should have to go with his eye patch. I mean, he's Yitu Begadim. Yitu Begadim. He's, he's wearing more than, than the, his vestments. He's not permitted to wear anything else. He's wearing an eye patch. Okay, took off his eye patch. Okay? So, Babu Shishimish, and he's Tommy, in addition, this guy is the, has the whole nine yards. He's Tommy, in addition to be a Babu. <laughs> to write, write, write a story on this. Rav Chiyo Bechayim Shtayim. Bar Kavar Omeinu Chayim Belachas. Kovat Rav Chiyo Nishba Avodish Kach Shemadim Rebbe Shem Shtayim. Each one swears to, to what his Mesor is. His Chorab Chiyoloton, Rab Chiyo started to prove his point. Why it should be Shtayim? Tumor, Lakol Nesra. Tumor is permitted. Tumor be Migdosh, nobody's. You're not permitted. Kishu Hutru be Migdosh. And when the Torah says Tumor Hutru be Tzibur, Tumor. It says, if all Kohanim are Tameim, the Halochi is by a Korban Tzibur, you're permitted to bring a Korban Tzibur in, in Betumor. No, no, let's all Kohanim. Sibur is not Tommy. But all, all the people who qualify to officiate, the majority are Tommy. The Allah is, the Kohanim could bring the Korban Betumah. Right? The whole Beisav, the whole family that's supposed to officiate this week, they're all Tommy. They just came back from the war. Okay? They're all what? You could bring it in the state of Tumah. Tumah, Tumah, Hutchim Betzibah, Tumah, Tchuy Betzibah, it doesn't make a difference. It doesn't make a difference. Tmimim, Hutra. Right? And to who does the Torah permit Tuma? A person is qualified to officiate. Right? There's a coin who's about mum. So if that's the case, he's, there's a double liability here. First, he's not permitted to officiate as about mum because he's blemished. In addition, when Torah says Tuma is permitted, even though he's doing a carbon, it's only where it's a kosher avoda. It's not a kosher avoda over here. The two, a qualified coin. Yeah, right? Because he's a Balmum, he's missing, he's missing his left arm. No, he's contaminated. He's contaminated. He's contaminated like all the quantum contaminated. But factually, Torah says it's only permitted if he's, quali if he's a qualified Kohen. He's not qualified. Because he's a Balmum, he has a blemish. Right? Yesh kam yishum Balimum, yesh kam yishum Tuma. Yesh kam yishum Tuma. Yesh kam yishum Tuma. Yesh kam yishum Tuma. No, Torah says Tum in the, in the Migdash is permitted regarding a carbon. No. Now, the halacha is anything, if you do a proper slaughtering, it's, it's kosher. What happens if you put your thumbnail by a oaf, an oaf, let's say, a chattas oaf, which is eaten by the Kohen, puts his nail through. The, the Kohen is eating the Vela. It's the Vela. But the Torah says. A coin is permitted to eat in the Vela of, of the oaf. Because since that is the Avoda, you put the thumbnail through the back of its neck, and that's the way you kill the bird, the coin eats it. Okay? Listen to the story. 
Zor shocha malika. Let's say the coin's permitted to eat a zor eight malika. Does he get? Does he get Malkus said two things. He's eating kochim. No, he's eating chatos. Wait, he's eating chatos. He's not permitted to eat kochim. In addition, he's eating the velo. So how many liabilities do you have? A single liability, double liability. That's the shaila. Rabbi Chiyah machayv shtayim. He's chayv in the velo. He's chayv for feeding kochim. Rabbi Chabora ma enu chayv ela achas. Kovitz Rabbi Chiyah v'nishba ha'avodo. Kashmadi Rabbi shtayim. Kovitz Rabbi Chabora v'nishba ha'avodo. Kashmadi Rabbi achas. Hischlo Rabbi Chiyah lodun. The velo l'kol mesra. The velo is forbidden to everybody. Chuhut Rabbi Migdo. Shem Torah says that. Where's first of where's chat sof eaten? It's eaten in the base of Migdosh. Right, with chatos, you can't eat outside the Azorah. Chuchu Migdosh eats the Kohanim Hutro. The Kohanim Hutro, Velo the Zorim. Who eats, who's supposed to eat the chatos? A Kohen. A non Kohen is not permitted to eat it. So, so what? Lo the Zorim. Yesh Kam Mishim Zars, Yesh Mishim Maliko. So there's a double liability. Here's Chubak Kapora. Doesn't take it lying down. Lodun, the Veil, the Kol Nesro. Kishutro, the Migdosh Hutro. Torah says, the this this bird is not classified as nevelo. No more. If the Kohen would eat, would he have two? Uh, if the Torah says if you eat enough uh, kosher bird, nevelo, you become tummy when it goes down your gullet. It's metambi sablia. Is the Kohen tummy? When the Kohen eats it, even though it's nevelo, Torah says you're permitted to eat it. So now you're going to tell me if Azor, Azor eats it, he's, he's not? He also not. Nevelo is hutcher. Nivlas, excuse me. The Malik, it's not called the Velo. Torah says this bird in the Migdush is not called the Velo. It's not the Velo. Lakol Nesro. Kishuchu be Migdush Uchro. If that's the case, in Kanem Shum Zar, so what is he eating? It's a Zor eating Chatos. Chatos Ovs. It's one. Now the question is, but my commitment. So what's the. So each one is, is intense on, on, his, on his position. He's adamant. Kovat Zanishba. Right? You see the intensity of the, of the Machlokas here. Notice, this, this is the more Ace Vais Vesufa. It's a fierce battle over here. Right? Howard is always saying, you know, I beat him up. I could break his bones. <laughs> you see over here. So, so I'm, I'm having Rachmanus on you. Okay. Okay. But my commitment is a kolel, a libid rabiosi. Right? It's, it, we spoke of Issa Mosef, we showed rabiosi also Issa Mosef. What about cola? Cola means if others included, the sisters, you also pull in the other sister. Right? That's our discussion here. What's the Issa Kola? Okay? Valib is Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Chiyo Sobar. Rabbi Yossi is a Kola Machayiv. Rabbi Chiyo. Kartik. Bar Kavar Sobar Machayiv Elochado. Let's talk. What, what, what's the application here? Ma Issa Kola di Koha. Bishlom Azor. Wait one second. Meikori, meikora shori bimlocha, vasa bavoda. One second. Zor shishimish b'shabbos. A zor officiated in the base of mikdash on Shabbos. So zor meikora shori bimlocha, vasa bavoda. One second. Initial, during the week, a zor could do anyone on lamas test melocha. It's not permitted. There's no prohibition. But during the week, is he permitted to go in the, in the base of mikdash to do that avoda? He's not permitted. If he wants to take the animal and burn it on the mizbech, he's not permitted. Okay, one second. Good. Asba Voda. Vasilo Shabbos. Oh, now it's an interesting Shiloh. Now Shabbos comes. So now what he wasn't permitted to do, he wasn't permitted during the week. Now Shabbos comes, that same action take on another dimension. So that new dimension could have come about. That's the Shabbos. that's the, it's like Anis and Khal Isr. How could Shabbos affect it when it's already affected? He's not permitted to do it. It's already us. He's not permitted to put the animal on, on the fire. To burn the to burn the carbon, right? Haktor is 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 chad misu b'dei shemayim for this, right? So right, the osa yisra vodo asio aslo shabbos. Wait a second. Migu to come mitzvah b'mlocha mitzvah nami ba vodo. Hear this, because just as he's not permitted in other melochas, he's not permitted in melocha. In avoda. Balmu meikor shari ba'chilo. Balmum is the permitted to eat kachim. It's permitted to eat kachim. Vasa ba'avoda. It me lay. Now it becomes tummy. So if the balmum becomes tummy. He's not permitted to eat kachim any longer. Right? A balmum, he can't, he's not permitted to officiate, but he can eat kachim. He retains because he's a Kohen. So originally, he wasn't permitted to avoda, but he's permitted to eat kachim. It me lay. Now it becomes tummy. Migu to go mitzvah 
Mitzi Ba'avodah. So again, now we're talking about with the classification of Kochim. He's not permitted to eat Kochim. Once that is it comes, it also, it's Nisa Tumah Fa'avodah. You understand? No, it's Tumah. We're talking about. Right, right, right. Migu. The Kamitzah Ba'achilah, because it's Achilah's Kochim. He's Ba'amum. So that, that preceded it. But now we want to know, is he in violation of tu, Avodah Betumah? That's the question. Is it Avodah Betumah? So once Achila goes, it spreads on everything. Everything. But the Tumah has to do with the Migdosh. It's Tumah be Migdosh. With the Achila. Achila's Kochim. No, so that's why he was saying. That's why he holds two. That's why it's two. El Melika Bevasachasi. The Mishkachas law. He's what about Malika? Malika, they, they we're talking about the Hiat Nevelo, Chatas Of. Does that have that one? We had Zor Shochal Malika. He had eight Nevelo. So it says he's Chayf in Nevelo and he's Chayf for eating Kochim. Right? El Malika Bevasa Achasik. Right? Comes Simon. Right? What exactly? Kochim? El Malika Bevasa Achasik de Mishkachas law. One second. Wait, wait, wait. One second. Be isa kol elo Isa kol, you're not going to find it. Why? Yeah, no, there's no isa kol el. No, there's no. Zor eating the velo, kochim simultaneous. Good, good, Gvaldik. So he says. So what's the machlokus? Everybody should agree, right? Before he said the onion kol el, but always it's not kol el. Right? Elo kemifkli bisa basachas. Hear this? I'll leave it to Rabbi Yossi. If two things could come about simultaneous. Right? I'll leave it to Rabbi Yossi. Rabbi Chiyosov, Rabbi Yossi, bisa basachas, mechaif tarti. Ubakab sova lo mechaif el echado. No, statement. Statement. Rabbi Yossi holds, what's the concept of Enos Challi, sir? If you have one, the other one. But here they're coming simultaneous. No, sir. Why shouldn't they both take effect simultaneously? Rabbi Kavos is only one. I mean, the question is, why, what, so which one do you choose? So that we said, that makes sense. The veil is always also for, for, for a Zohar. It's also for everybody. Right. So that, 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 is the, that is the profile, the high profile of the two. The whole profile is what? And the veil is also to everybody. It's Mutan Right. Wait, 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 wait. Yeah, 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 yeah. No, now we're going to learn all the case of Vasachas. Because the third case is Vasachas. Once we say Vasachas, we don't have to talk about Kolel any longer. Right? Till now we said it. The, the first case, we had the case of Kolel. Other things were brought in, do you bring in that? Here, it's happening simultaneously. It's, and we say, since simultaneously, one doesn't prevent the other. Or do we say, it's only one, not two. So we're, now, so we're learning all the cases, Basas. How do you have all the cases? We have, um, the first case was what? Zor Shishim Shabbos. Right? Zor Shishim Shabbos. The icy stay Cyrus Shabbos. A person, he was, he was 13 years old, and he reached puberty on Shabbos. He had the two puberty cases came on Shabbos. So when Shabbos began, the Torah had no relevance to him. Correct? Had no relevance to him. So the prohibition of Shabbos and Zarus, that he's not permitted to officiate, came at one time. Right? He became a Bar Chiyuva Shabbos morning. Shabbos morning. He became a person of obligation. So when did everything come about? Simultaneous. This, and this is the first Shabbos. Right? Next Shabbos was a different story. This is the first Shabbos of his Bar Mitzvah. Right? So he goes, and they said, today you're going to officiate as the rabbi in the temple. So he goes, he goes, Zor Shishimesh, the reform rabbi, sends him to do the Avoda. Right? Zor Shishimesh, first Shabbos is Bar Mitzvah. And the father says, Bosh Shabbatrani. Okay? <laughs> sends him off too. Okay? Shabbos, the Havi law, Zarus of Shabbos, Vadi Adodi. So Shabbos, Balmum, Nami. Balmum, same story. Balmum Shishimesh. He was a Kohen, he was a minor. He reached adulthood on Shabbos. And he's a Balmum. Right? So the Vod Vasachas. Right? Go daisish the Isaiahs, we eat me lay, tabamum betum about the adodi. Inami, listen to the story, shechotech etzbo besakin, temeo. 
You hear what happened over here? He became, he, he was a full-fledged coin. He was going to do that vote, and with the knife, he cut off his finger. And the socket was Tommy. So, Balmum and Tommy came about simultaneously. The provision relating to him. The provision of Balmum and Tommy came about simultaneously. Okay? Bishlom of the Reb Chiyav Ki Asni Yodhi Didei Alibi the Reb Yosik. Reb Chiyav Ki Asni Yodhi Didei Alibi the Reb Yosik. Okay? That's Reb Yosik. Ki Asni Yodhi Didei Alibi the Reb Shimon. Because we're saying that's the argument. El Bar Kapo Elo Le Bar Kapo Reb Chiyav Shkuri Kamashake. I mean, if Reb Chiyav swore, Rebbe said that, so how could Reb Bar Kapo swear differently? That means he's calling Reb Chiyav a liar. If you're taking a shvur, that means this is true. What you're saying is, is a false. So he's saying what Reb Chiyav Shkuri Kamashake. Yeah, no. I don't. Yeah, look, I don't understand. Someone who said the other way, and when Reb Chiyav takes a shvur, he's not calling Reb. Reb, Reb, Reb you know why? Because Reb Chiyav swore first. <laughs> he swore first. So if you swear, that means you call me a liar. Reb Chiyav swore. Reb Chiyav didn't swear yet. Right? He says, you're wrong. Okay? Elo kamifli b'yisha b'vas achas, alibi the Reb Shimon. Well, but Reb Shimon before said, no, 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 it doesn't make a difference. We have before Machlux, Reb Yossi and Reb Shimon. Reb Shimon, Reb Yossi said, chayiv shtayim. Reb Shimon omeh and chayiv el achas. Right? So we're saying, they're arguing not according to Reb Yossi, Vasach is not about the court according to Reb Shimon. Bishlom Reb Chiyo Kamishtab Ola Fuke Lu Reb Shimon Michizkiyo El Bar Kavor Lomalei Lashtabui Kasho To be continued. Okay.